The stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, The Man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. On this episode, we are reviewing the Survivor cards in Return to the Circle Undone. There are spoilers throughout if you care about that sort of thing. If you enjoy what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Just a quick reminder of how we rate cards here on The Whisper in Darkness. The best of the best get an Elder Sign, while the worst of the worst get an Auto Fail, and the cards in between receive a plus one, zero, or Elder Thing, respectively. Before we get started, I'd like to thank the patrons of this channel for their tremendous support. The Arkham Horror LCG community is amazing, and these people have gone above and beyond to bring you content like these card reviews. If you'd like to support the channel's goals and see your name on this list, head over to Patreon.com, sign up for a tier of your choice, and claim your rewards. That would be awesome. Without further ado, let's get started. The first Survivor card in the pack is the Nine of Rods, Every Trial a Lesson. It is a three-cost asset that costs three experience points. Tarot card trait as a response. When you draw a non-weakness encounter card, exhaust Nine of Rods, cancel all of that card's effects, and shuffle it into the encounter deck. Then draw another card from the top of the encounter deck. Same response as all of the other tarot cards. If it starts in your opening hand, it starts in play, takes up a tarot slot. No cost, just cancel any enemy or treachery that you don't like. Mm -hmm. And it's not unique, so you can do it twice, yep. which is gross. <laughs> wow, this card is really strong. Encounter deck manipulation has always been something that i think you and i have been both cautious of with card design in this game because if you eliminate the threat of the encounter deck you essentially make a lot of the scenarios uh not challenging whatsoever and this this card is strong i, I don't think it's problematic in that sense but man oh man is this card good it certainly makes you question it yeah, as, as someone who has played a lot of uh, William T. Mallison since his release in Lost in Time and Space, the ability to, you know, cancel an encounter card, even if you have to draw another one, uh, you're usually canceling this when when you have no other choice. You've drawn an, an encounter card that is going to wreck you. Suddenly that encounter card is gone, and uh, you get something that is usually infinitely better for you there are some scenarios where uh, i found that you know so many of the encounter cards are all equally bad that uh, sometimes it's just like well do i take this on the chin or do i try for something better knowing that it could potentially get worse or at least be a side grade but i mean if you're playing and you draw an enemy that you can't handle odds are you can probably shuffle it away and and get a, a deal with a treachery instead and the fact that they took away the cost uh william t mallison of course you had to drop a clue at your location in order to trigger it which kept him uh balanced this one uh, there's no such cost you just need to exhaust it so survivors I mean, have done very very well over the past few packs and uh and here's one i i guess the 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 one good thing about this is and i know we have been pretty uh wary of cards that deal with the encounter deck but this is priced at three experience points which takes it out of the the hands of pretty much everyone but dedicated seekers so it's you're not going to see this one all over the place at least yeah, if Min could take this card, that would just be silly. But, um, I mean, I think for me, it's more the fact that you could do this twice. And if you were able to to get a, a second copy of this in play and then start drawing potentially, like, three encounter cards and keeping one of them, then that gets pretty problematic because you're really filtering a lot of the encounter deck. Um it also is good specifically in the scenario where the gods dwell from the end of the Dream Eaters campaign where you need to draw a specific encounter card in order to complete that scenario. And this helps you to continue shuffle and find that card. I, I can see where you're coming from. I mean, having two copies on the table and being able to pick sort of the best of three cards is, or at least look at three cards, not necessarily you get the, the third one, but... Uh, being able to have that sort of selection is nice. I guess the maybe the cost on this one keeps it within the realm of 
sanity because three you know so many seekers or so many I keep saying seekers instead of survivors so many survivors tend to run with uh, one run very light on resources so being able to afford a couple of copies of this especially if you don't draw one in your opening hand uh could be tough yeah but, I, I mean given I the agree. choice you know a lot of the so many of the tarot cards have been like if I don't draw them in my opening hand, chances are I'm not going to play it because I don't want to pay the cost. This one, I probably would pay the cost for it. Yeah, and, you know, getting all that set up is admittedly difficult. Like, you have to play a specific ally or you have to play another, you have to play another card that gives you another tarot slot. And, you know, you have to set all that up, which is admittedly difficult. But, but yeah, just more to the point that this card is just quite quite good in general in that being able to manipulate the encounter deck can be really strong in a lot of scenarios yeah definitely so how would you rate this one you know i think despite me being a bit cautious of its potential i think it i think this is one of those cards that i i play a couple of times and then, like you say, I, I don't draw it in my opening hand, and then the game kind of just gets out of control, and I'm not able to, to play it. And and in those situations, this card isn't going to feel great because it's not going to contribute much to anything to, towards your strategy. But in the games where you get it all set up and you're able to cancel a bunch of really potent encounter cards, this card's going to be a, an all-star for you, so... I'm debating on a zero or a plus one. It's right around there, I think. I don't think it's as exciting as something like uh, the Hierophant, but it is really good. Yeah, I think I'm going to settle on a plus one for this one. I know if I drew this in my opening hand, I would be very, very happy because I know I'm going to have uh, some protection from the encounter deck for the rest of the scenario. If I draw a treachery I can't handle, it's gone. If I draw an enemy I don't want to deal with, it's gone. And uh, sometimes that's going to backfire, but in my experience, usually what you draw in its place uh, is often better for you. So uh, I don't know if I would go as far as, you know, buying two copies and then buying all of the cards I need to get the two copies into play. I think that might be uh, overkill. Because you'd need, you know, two copies of this plus either the Moon Pendant or Anna to get you an additional slot, and probably not not worth it to to spend all that experience just to get a couple of extra looks at the encounter deck. I'd rather spend my experience elsewhere. But I think plus one for this is is uh, it's a good card. So what do you think about a survivor deck that takes a Watchful Peace, you Catastrophe, uh? fortune fate or fortune and this card and you build around that whole like strategy of i'm not going to let the encounter deck touch us at all ah uh, yes yeah they're certainly reaching uh, i mean they were pretty cautious over the you know since the life of the game about cards like this and it seems we're seeing more and more of them as the as the game continues at least the the taboo list, uh, the recent taboo list, uh, tapped down some of those uh, abusive strategies by adding remove from game on on a lot of the cards that probably should have had it in the first place. So uh, um, honestly, I think they could have gone a step further and rather than just add them to the list of taboos, they should have just eroded them and added remove from game on them and dealt with them that way. But I know they're very wary of adding of, of errata, so... But yeah, that's a pretty gross deck if you're if you've got the uh, the encounter deck on lockdown. I'm sure somebody has already built that deck. If you do, I'd like to see it, so post it in the comments. The second card, uh, the second survivor card in the pack is uh, Trial by Fire level three. Lots of level three cards. Two cost event, two wild skill icons, spirit trait. It is fast. Play only during your turn. Until the end of your turn, set the base value of each of your skills to 5, or the base value of one of your skills to 7. Trial by Fire 0 has seen uh, play in a 
pretty wide variety of survivors and off-class survivors, the, the two most popular ones being uh, the rogue Preston Fairmont and Calvin Wright, both of whom have very low base skill values to begin with. Uh, the original version of Trial by Fire lets you set only one of your skills to five. This one lets you set all of them to five or uh, one to seven, and it has two wild skill icons on top. So pretty nice upgrade if you were using Trial by Fire in the first place. Oh, yeah. I mean, this card is great. I Just thinking of those circle tests in Union and Disillusion and just laughing all the way to the bank when you play this card, because this just makes so many of those tests infinitely easier to pass i don't know how often you'd end up using that second ability like boosting a skill up to seven is is good and i think there are times when you're probably going to want that in circumstances where you're planning on fighting for a whole turn or you plan on just like hunkering down in one location and investigating for a turn but i think most of the time an investigator is probably going to choose the boosting all of your skills by five as i would imagine you have a way to get extra actions and use or like take advantage of that somehow whether it's you know using track shoes or or something like that and stella so i'm not too sure how often i would use that seven either i know uh, having played preston recently uh, there were quite a few situations where i could have definitely used that the first ability because I wanted to evade, move, and investigate, and having a five in one uh, skill but not the other was kind of annoying. Um, this upgrade solves that problem. Uh, I'm not too sure Preston can take this, can he? No, he can't. It's um, no, he can't. So it's level three. So only Calvin and uh, various other dedicated survivors. So I guess Preston gets cut out of the doesn't get this goody but uh i mean certainly calvin loves this yeah he loved the level zero version so this version just makes him a ginormous monster of stats <laughs> like can easily get upwards of like a 10 10 10 10 10 stat line so i think that was too many tens but <laughs> you get the point he just becomes an absolute beast at taking skill tests so how would you rate this one? I think this card is actually better in harder difficulties because you need you need every point that you can get and this this card gives you that and then some. So, you know, if you play on harder difficulties, I would almost give this an elder sign just because I think it's going to be essential to passing tests in those difficulties, but in standard I'd probably stick with a 0 to a plus 1 depending on your build. It's unfortunate that Preston can't take this because he would really enjoy this card as well, but it is what it is, and Calvin players rejoice. Yeah, well, Preston did get uh, well-connected level 3, so he's not completely cut out of the uh, the skill boosts in this, in this box. Yeah, I think uh, I haven't played Calvin in a long time uh, after some very unfortunate runs through the, uh, through the Untamed Wilds. Uh, but uh, I think plus one is a uh, is a good spot for this one. The ability to to set all of your skills to five or one to seven gives you a lot of flexibility when you're uh, planning out your your turn. And of course, this being fast, you're you're not losing any actions to to deal with it. And two wild skill icons can't hurt either if you uh, if you don't happen to need those those skill boosts or you don't have the resources to play it. That's going to do it for our look at the Survivor cards in the Return to the Circle Undone. Survivors do very well for themselves uh, in this box. The Nine of Rods giving them yet another way to uh, to counter what the uh, encounter deck is doing. And uh, Trial by Fire giving uh, investigators like Calvin, and I've seen this uh, Trial by Fire pop up in Patrice as well among other survivors, a, a way of boosting some of their uh, their low skill values, uh, their, I guess their below average skill values into above average territory. Any final thoughts, Nate? No, just typical survivors doing survivor things. That's going to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you need to contact me, I can be reached at manfromlang at gmail.com. I'm also on Twitter at manfromlang. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there, and happy investigating.